thanks everybody. Appreciate you taking some time out of your busy schedule to uh, be with us today to take a look at uh, Starship and learn about four things that you might not know about Starship. Uh, today we're going to focus on our dynamics uh, solution, uh, primarily with the Business Central integration. We also have a number of uh, Great Plains customers with us as well. My name is Chris Butner. I'm a sales rep for VTech, and I handle all of the Dynamics customers for the company. Let's have a brief PowerPoint presentation, and then we'll get right into the product demo. So a little bit about VTechnologies first. Uh, we initially were founded in the late 80s. A little bit about VTechnologies. Uh, we initially developed the product for small package carriers uh, starting back in the late 80s. Um, uh, we've been working with uh, the Great Plains products since the early 90s and have continued that relationship uh, with the uh, acquisition by Microsoft and uh, opening up uh, the territory to uh, the new business central application and cloud-based customers. And we also uh, have expanded the integration beyond just parcel carriers to support LTL carriers and freight carriers as well. Uh, currently, the uh, customer has a com uh, customer base has a combined number of uh, 10,000 customers that have used our solutions to help improve the shipping workflow with their business. So, some of those uh, four points that you might not know about Starship, we're going to focus on today as part of the presentation. Uh, Starship offers you the ability to have multiple carriers, both your small package and your freight carriers uh, in one user interface, one application with the hooks into Dynamics, and it also has the ability to help with the routing with best way shipping rules, freight rules, and um, ship via rules that can be set up uh, with some criteria to auto automate the process of carrier selection if you don't want to leave that up to the operator. Starship also has a robust dashboard that is uh, geared towards your front office users, folks in customer service or accounting that need access to information about the status of the shipment, uh, but they don't actually ship. We have an unlimited number of dashboard users for the front office that can give you visibility to the activity out in the warehouse without bumping anybody off the system. You also have the uh, ability to manage your delivery expectations so you can keep in constant contact with your customers on the status of the shipment with automated email uh, options to include branding, messaging, any kind of uh, repeat business that you want to drive back to your site or your carts. That could also include any kind of marketing information in the emails, and those can all be automated to be triggered automatically as soon as the shipment is processed. We've also added additional functionality to enhance the uh, hazmat capabilities. You can now get the shipper's declaration paperwork directly out of the system without requiring third-party software. Uh, we've also expanded our uh, ability to support EDI shipping with a number of different EDI uh, solution partners, as well as the ability to print uh, GS1-128 compliant labels for your trading partners. Expanded the uh, ability for international shipping, both outbound and expanded the uh, support for Canadian origins as well. And as I mentioned, the branded email notifications. Quick look at all the uh, various carriers that are available to you as part of the Starship uh, solution now. Uh, we have over uh, 20 different LTL or common carrier options in Starship. You'll notice uh, some familiar names here. We've also uh, developed uh, relationships with a number of third party logistics companies such as CH Robinson, Freight Quotes, and Worldwide Express. Starship can also leverage the transportation management system from FreightView that can expand this list of carriers that you see here to about 75, 80 different uh, providers across the country, uh, some of your smaller rural carriers, as well as an additional uh, number of 3PLs that can be supported on the system. As I mentioned, we also pushed into Canada. So you have Canadian support now uh, for native uh, Canadian origin shipping uh, through Purulator, Canpar, and Canada Post, in addition to UPS and FedEx. Starship also has uh, focused over the last number of years uh, for expanding our e-commerce footprint. And you'll see a number of uh, names that you may recognize here for different uh, marketplaces 
and shopping carts that uh, is ever expanding. So similar to the carriers uh, with the e-commerce solutions, if there are uh, carriers or uh, uh, marketplaces or um, shopping carts where you're selling on, feel free to contact your uh, sales rep. And uh, we're always looking for feedback from our customers on where to go next. And these lists are always expanding. We'll take a look next at the product demo. Let's change screens here right quick. All right, here's the Starship user interface. Uh, been redesigned over the last few years for use in a browser. Same application uh, that you may be familiar with uh, using the desktop solution, just now with the convenience of running that in the browser with a new facelift and coat of paint. Uh, same sort of functionality where you're able to select your Dynamics uh, sales transactions and bring them into Starship for processing. You can scan or enter those records over here by putting in the order or invoice that you want to ship against. You also have the ability to uh, sort on any of the fields below here. And you can pick which fields are available from the order header to sort on. You also have filters. So if you want to drill down into a subset of data, look for a specific field. Maybe you want to look for a purchase order number or all the orders for a particular customer. Um, maybe you want to search for um, a certain shipping method, um, run all of your FedEx two-day orders all at once. This can narrow down the view of what you see here below. There's also grouping that can be done if you want to uh, batch process shipments and get multiple orders into the same shipment. We'll go ahead and select the record here and get started with shipping. So this will connect over to Dynamics, bring over um, all of your uh, data from the order header, all of your line items, in this case, we're acting over to Business Central, so to populate on the user interface, um, giving you the ship to, the ship from information with the address uh, data coming over. We also validate that. You'll see a green checkbox here letting you know that we check the address. That should eliminate on uh, a number of uh, accessorials that you may be encountering for delivery area surcharge, for residential, for rural areas. And there's also an exception report that we can produce that can flag any of those addresses that uh, may have been corrected. So you can go back and correct your, um, your ERP or your CRM tables. Carrier and service from the shipping method, that'll translate as well. So you have the carrier and service here. You can always change that or this can be locked down if you don't want to allow the user to make that selection. Uh, with the carrier um, and service level, that can also go through the ship via rules or the rate shopping rules to uh, make that carrier selection for the operator, if you'd like. You have your products below here. And then packaging, uh, you can set up packaging around items. Uh, in Starship's database, you have the relationship that you can build between the size of a particular container and which, uh, which type of uh, material can go in there. You can also pack those up manually. So here, I'm gonna separate out these products and put them into their own containers. This allows me to do a package level packing list where it can show exactly what the packaging um, is. And you can, so you can see what uh, the contents of each container are. And we can also select from our database here, uh, the uh, packaging that we wanna place that in. That can include the length, width, and height. So you can calculate dimensional weight versus the actual weight, whichever the higher the two of those are, that's what the carrier will bill you for. Rates here, we'll go out and grab the rates from the carriers. So you have three sets of rates. List price would be whatever the published price is from the carrier. Contract price would be any discounts that you have uh, extended from the carrier. And then the applied rate is ultimately one of the two rates, the list or the contract, plus any kind of handling or discounts on top of that. And you can drill down into the rules here to see exactly how we arrived at that price. So if there's ever a discrepancy on the invoice, you can come back and see what kind of handling fees or discounts were assessed. If we want to leave this with uh, UPS, we can go ahead and process now. Our starship can go out and take a look at all the various rates that are available to that destination. You'll come back with a list of options that you can then choose from.
we'll list those here in the order of appearance from least expensive down to most expensive. You can also sort on the transit time, the amount of days it'll take to get there. Looks like uh, we chose well on the order entry side. So UPS ground, we'll leave it with them, both the cheapest and the fastest method to get it there. There's also a date and time that can be uh, either entered or mapped over. So if you have a, a date certain delivery, it's time sensitive, you wanna make sure it gets there on a certain amount of time, Starship can parse out any of these services that won't meet your transit time. So we'll go ahead and process this here. So right back our tracking, our freight, all our detail back into Dynamics. And it will be available there for customer service, for invoicing, and move on to your next transaction. Next, we'll go ahead and process a freight shipment. Well, that's the same process with freight. The ship via code is really what's going to drive that logic on which carrier and service to go with. Again, you have your carriers here, so you can change those on the fly. Or you can rate shop, and Starship will give you a number of options that you can then select from. Main difference with freight, you have uh, you know two layers of packaging, so you have uh, both the containers for items that go in boxes, and then boxes that go on pallets. You can pack those out here. We also have a redesigned packing assistant that can give you more real estate on the screen to work with for packing out your shipments. We'll go ahead and ship this out, and then we'll take a look back in Business Central. So Starship can push the information to both the sales order um, or the invoice. We can also move that information to the posted sales shipments. So on the BC side, we'll enter the freight as a line on the order. We'll also populate the carrier and service level. We can do reverse value translations. So if we were to route this instead, we'd say FedEx or Postal or we go freight, we can backfill that into the order here. Your package tracking will be populated here in the order header for the field that's designated for that. Starship has also added this widget. Um, into Business Central where you can capture additional information. We'll put on the notes. Uh, so if you're familiar with our order header comments in GP, we'll also be populating the same type of information here. And you have control over the comments as far as the detail, what's pushed back here. You can also have an unlimited number of user-defined fields with the Starship widget that will give you the ability to plug in um, any additional data that you may wanna capture here. So here we have our exposure on the freight and then the, uh, the amount that we're going to uh, charge um, broken out here. So we have that available for reporting. Starship will also put in you know, individual tracking numbers for multi-piece shipment with a link here into our dashboard. So this will take you to the historical shipment. Anybody in customer service can go ahead and track the status of that shipment call it up here. If there's ever a question on the freight, you'll have access to exactly how we arrived at those charges. Copy of any labels or documents will be here. So you can easily access the historical records and forward that on to the customer if, if need be. Uh, this isn't a live shipment, uh, but uh, in the case of a live shipment, you'd see the shipment status here with point by point tracking as it moves uh, closer to its destination. And this is what you'd see here uh, after it's picked up, up until the point that it's signed and delivered. Uh, Starship can do background tracking, uh, so it can go out and track all of the in-transit shipments up until the point that they're delivered 
and that status would be available right here. Uh, this is uh, coming from our dashboard. Uh, so the link from uh, the dynamic side will launch you directly into the record here in history. You can also get to the dashboard directly. So Starship has a redesigned dashboard that gives you uh, some additional um, enhanced functionality. We still have all of the crystal reports from the previous uh, dashboard version. Uh, with this new dashboard, you also have a number of predefined sorts uh, with some canned analytics here, some basic uh, lookups on your freight spend over a period of time. We also have the heat map here, which can give you a look into uh, trends in shipping, where you're shipping the most product to. And then your history is here. This is searchable by any of the common ERP fields that you may want to look up by order, PO number, customer ID. Any, any value really can be queried within Starship uh, to find that in history here and then bring that up, up on the screen. So again, this can be accessed by anybody in the front office. Uh, it's uh, freely distributed with the license. Anybody uh, in the organization that needs access to shipment history would have access to that here through the dashboard. Uh, there's also the rate quote utility that can expose the rating to any folks in the front office that need access to rates as well. And that does not consume a seat on your license. Take a quick look at some of the rules here. So you have a number of different rules. Freight rules can be used to manipulate the amount of freight that you want to pass on to your customer. Your ship via rules uh, can add some logic to the carrier selection. So you also have the ability to comment out carriers and service levels uh, that you may not use. So they're, even though they may come back from the carrier in the rate request, they would not be exposed on the user interface. So let's say if you don't want to make certain uh, priority level or next day services, Saturday deliveries, things like that available. You can comment those out. You can put conditions in where Starship can automatically switch the ship via code based on some preset criteria. And then your rate shop scenarios can also be defined to automatically select the carrier. Um, so there's some routing tools in here that can help eliminate any of that guesswork by your personnel and enforce your business rules um, conditionally wizard based there's no programming involved uh, that can easily be set up uh, by the customer so hopefully if uh, folks are logged into business central you'll have access here at your fingertips you also have the dashboard with the Email notification, you can also proactively notify your customers of the status. So Starship gives you the ability to um, customize your email templates, the ability to add logos, branding, any kind of uh, colors that you want into the email. You also have the ability to add whatever reference fields you want into the body of the email um, that can have links into your carts, any kind of marketing material, literature. There's also attachments. So if you have a catalog or uh, literature, any kind of uh, additional data that you want to pass along as an attachment. Or Starship can also pull uh, records directly from uh, the shipping uh, documents. So things like your bill of lading, export documents, packing list, all of that can be branded as well within the body of the document. And then all those attachments can automatically be inserted into the email notification. There's conditions and rules within emails as well that can be assigned to a certain customer, a certain product. So you have control over the messaging um, based on who the audience is. Quick look at some of the documents that are available. You do have uh, standard templates that are available in Starship that can be modified. Uh, looking here at a bill of lading, you have the straight bill of lading. Let's have a VIX. If you're doing a consolidated shipment or a truckload uh, with multiple stops, you also have the master BOL. And we can also get documents directly from carriers. So you can kind of pick and choose, mix and match which documents you want to use based on some predefined criteria. Once that's set up in the print jobs, Starship will automatically print out the correct documents. Let's have hazardous paperwork. Uh, there's a hazardous bill of lading, 
to mention, you can also get the shippers declarations from UPS and FedEx now directly from the carrier web services. Uh, there's branded labels and uh, packing lists. We also have these hybrid forms here, a couple of different formats of those where you can put your branding on there. And then if you're shipping overseas, all of the export documents are included as well. Uh, if it's going overseas, you'll need a commercial invoice. Canada or Mexico, you have the uh, paperwork, the former NAFTA paperwork as well as a US certificate of origin for anywhere else in the world. Or if you're using a broker, you have a shipper's letter of instruction that's available as well. There's also uh, hooks into the ACE filing system. So if you require an ITM number, all of that can be triggered from the item level. Starship does keep records about all of your products and properties about the items that may not live in the item master within the ERP. We'll cross-reference the part number with all of those properties that may be saved in the Starship database. So we'll always look to the ERP first. So if it's coming out of Dynamics, we'll match you know, any of that information coming from the item master. Here, Starship can fill in any of the freight properties, NMFC codes, descriptions uh, to populate your bill of lading, also to know how to rate that. It's going overseas, country of origin, Schedule B code, whether or not you have to file for an ITN number. If it does require the Canada and Mexico paperwork or certificate of origin to clear customs. Um, if you have hazardous materials, then all of those properties are also stored here as well. And then packaging can be defined. So you can define different quantities of product and Starship can do some auto packing for you. It can automatically assemble cartons and put those into a certain size box so you can easily capture dimensional weight. Uh, of course, Starship does support uh, peripherals that can grab the weight and the size in real time as well. There's a number of different uh, makes and models that can do that for you. All right, that covers just about all of the topics that we had prepared for everybody today in the webinar. Oh, I'll throw up my contact info here very quick. Uh, yep, feel free to uh, reach out if you have any questions. Uh, my email is here. And uh, we'll be following up with everybody individually after the webinar in the, in the next few days here with both the recording and uh, to schedule any one on one calls or discussions. If you want to take a closer look, uh, feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to uh, continue the discussion. Really appreciate everybody taking the time today. Uh, thanks and uh, have a great day.